इट इज बेसिकली एयर फिल्ड कैविटी प्रेजेंट इन दिटरस पार्ट ऑफ टेम्परल बोन राइट एंड नाउ आई विल ड्रॉ थ्रू आउट माई डायग्राम आई विल ओनली ड्रॉ द राइट मिडल एयर राइट वाई Why not left? Because, it's the right. Because left is same as right. It's not exactly same. It's little, little different. You know, inner wall there to inside and outer wall there, outside. But for right ear, outer wall is here, and for left ear, outer wall is there. So this is the only difference. Otherwise, it's same. Okay. Now, I will draw only the right ear. tympanic cavity so let me draw yes i told you how it looks yeah boy they are excited <laughs> this is the pinna and what is this thing external acoustic meatus and this is middle ear cavity this is lateral side this is medial side this is floor and here it is roof right and now in the middle ear cavity first of all if we are looking at we are seeing the this is compressed from both sides right so we also say bilaterally compressed cavity right or we also use a word that is biconcave cavity you are getting it because there is a cave from inside and cave from this side outer side of tympanic membrane is concave towards the concave or convex concave. it is concave outward and convex inward right so it's a by so what is laterally compressed it is not vertical walls now why the question is that why it is compressed inside and why that is compressed inside actually first we will talk about this this is tympanic membrane in the tympanic membrane later on we'll learn there is a bone and yes what is this bone which is in intimate relationship with the tympanic membrane malleus malleus right this is the malleus bone this is the handle of the malleus right and handle of the malleus tympanic membrane a part of a tympanic membrane is sticking with the handle of malleus and yes now whenever mem tympanic membrane will vibrate when the air waves will come a sound waves will come right tympanic membrane act as a resonator resonator mean that tympanic membrane reproduces the vibrations which are produced at the source of the sound so it resonates tympanic membrane resonates with the vibrations of the source of sound so we can say tympanic membrane is the resonator so what really happen that when from the air air is compressible elastic tissue not tissue medium right so air, so air waves or you can say sound waves when they approach through uh, they enter into external acoustic meatus they approach medially they hit the tympanic membrane when tympanic membrane start vibrating as handle of the malleus is strongly attached with the tympanic membrane so very faithfully it will also vibrate with tympanic membrane and when malleus will be vibrating then what will happen malleus is happy all the time like kids rocking right so when malleus will vibrate right this will pass on its vibrations to the next ossicular bone and this next oss ossicular bone yes this is called what incus. incus this bone is called incus right incus bone and then yes let me tell you the parts of the malleus this is handle of the malleus this is lateral process of the malleus from here there is a process going anteriorly that is called anterior process of malleus and neck of the malleus and head of the malleus let me draw the malleus here for you okay i will draw my malleus from this side right if you are looking at my malleus from that side then uh, this is the head of the malleus this is the neck of the malleus uh this is the yes handle handle of the malleus here there is lateral process of malleus outward and here there is anterior process of malleus 
here i have drawn the cavity middle ear cavity like this this is the anterior side is that right so this is interior process this is handle omelius this is lateral it's coming outside now what really happens with the head of the malleus the next bone is attached and this is called incus right and incus has a short process okay i will draw the incus here this is a long process of incus going down and here is a short process short process of incus is backward short process of incus is backward and anterior process of malleus is forward so we can imagine that if this is the malleus this is the head of the malleus what is it this is the head of the malleus this is interior side so from the neck this is the neck of the malleus this is the handle of the malleus from here what is this process yes say it loud later there is one small process like this what is this lateral, lateral process and behind it like this what is this incus right so now i will make malleus like this i've changed the malleus this is the malleus neck and here is what incus now incus is this is the incus incus attaches here and this is the long process of incus what is this long, long process of incus and behind like my thumb incus has one process behind this is called short process of incus is it right so this is the basic arrangement and incus when goes down its long process turns a little medially and when it turns medially here it articulates with one more bone and this bone is i will talk to later this is a bone which has a very important function to do this is foot plate of this bone this is called stapes what is it called stapes stapes now step stapes bone this is the third bone uh, stapes bone basically has a head neck these are the limbs and this is foot piece or foot plate now foot plate of stapes is attached on the medial wall what is this on this side there is medial wall here it is lateral wall now this is called ossicular ossicular chain ossicles of middle ear or ossicular chain so when you look at the middle ear content one of the important thing which you see there are three small bones minute bones and these bones are called middle ear ossicles and there's malleus laterally in the middle there's incus and most medially there is stapes. stapes am i clear now what is the purpose of whole this arrangement basically this is external ear here there is inner ear yes on the medial side there should be inner ear so this is the i will draw the inner ear here now what really happens that actually the function of the middle ear is the function of the middle ear is that it will pick the sound wave energy from the tympanic membrane sound energy right sound wave energy it will pick from the tympanic membrane or external ear and lead to the vibrations or oscillations in malleus incus and stapes and then transfer this these sound vibrations from the external ear to the internal ear the basic function of the middle ear is that it transfers the sound energy from the lateral what lateral side from the external acoustic meatus right it picks the sound energy through the tympanic membrane and through the movements of what is this ossicular chain which act as a lever and transfer this energy to the inner ear now let me draw inner ear here okay so now listen one thing inner ear here is like a coil cochlea cochlea is a coiled structure but i have uncoiled it i have opened it up right cochlea actually if you see this is the middle ear right on this side inner ear is like a what is this 
this arrangement. What I have done in this diagram, I have untwisted it for simplicity purpose. Okay. Even though nature is not that simple. So I have untwisted it. Now you can see, uh, basically, th this is a bony canal. This is a bony canal. And inside it, I will make this area with different colors so you can understand it well. Uh, inner ear is a structure with a lot of bony canals housing the membranous duct in the cochlea this is the bony canal and it is housing a duct this is green colored this is a duct and this duct is called cochlear duct what is this duct cochlear duct right and when sound sound waves approach the tympanic membrane tympanic membrane oscillates right Th those frequency of oscillations frequency of oscillation is faithfully transmitted through the ossicular chain to the foot plate of stapes and foot plate of stapes is fit into a window right this window okay let me show you exactly what is here there is a window here we call it oval window what we call it oval, oval window this window is in the medial wall right and foot plate of stapes basically fits into this oval window. oval window right and this window on the other side opens into inner ear and this is fluid filled cavity of the inner ear so when this will vibrate here there is fluid this fluid is called yes what is the name of this fluid endolymph. not endolymph right. this is perilymph <coughs> remember in the bony canal the fluid is perilymph inside the bony canal there is a duct membranous duct inside the membranous duct this is a fluid which is called endolymph. endolymph i will really not go into detail of these structures right now because that's domain of the inner ear lecture but right now what i really want to put in your mind that when what is this stapes vibrates right it creates the vibrations in this fluid perilymph right and this vibrations of course when uh, stapes move inward this part of cochlea is called scala yes scala scala vestibuli very good vestibuli right and fluid pressure wave can come up to here and this is called scala tympani right now what we can say that foot plate of stapes is fit into an oval window which opens medially into cochlear system in the vestibule and moves the peri what is this perilymph peri and creates vibrations into inner ear fluids right and of course when it will move inward the pressure wave will go and it will come back here and when this will move inward this will move outward so nature has provided here a membrane and this membrane is there is a round window here this was oval window and this is round window and it is made of a elastic membrane so what happens because as you know that fluid is incompressible what fluid is incompressible it cannot be compressed so when it these vibrations are being created so this membrane vibrate with that right so this is scala vestibuli and where scala vestibuli meet the scala tympani this point is called helicoprima what is this called helicoprima but we will not go into detail right now this is cochlear duct right what really happens that when foot plate of stapes vibrates vibrations are produced or oscillations are produced in perilymph right perilymph vibrations will lead to stimulation of hair cell present in cochlear duct i will not go into that mechanism in detail now right but what really happens these oscillations eventually activate certain hair cells and this hair cells uh, which are present in the cochlear duct when they vibrate right their membrane vibrate and their cilia bend that produces influx of the ions into these 
cells and in this way mechanical energy which is coming is converted into electrical current and that electrical current is taken up by the new neuronal system to the central nervous system of course cochlear nerves is that right so there is mechano electrical coupling in the inner ear but what was the function of the middle ear what was the function of the middle ear major function of the middle ear was collect for a very simple purpose for very simple way to explain collect the sound energy from large what tympanic membrane and move this energy through the auricular system picking from the external ear and impinge or press this energy take this energy to a small oval window from large tympanic membrane to small oval window right and lead to the movements or you can say vibrations into incompressible middle ear fluids now air is what air is compressible air is elastic but fluid is not elastic it's not compressible so here there is weak vibration if these vibrations go directly there they cannot produce strong effect but when we this energy goes through this system the large area force collected from the large area impinged on small area so force become amplified plus there is the liver action so we can say if you look at the surface area of oval window ratio with the surface area of tympanic membrane it is about tympanic membrane is 17 times 17 times larger than the oval window so it means when we are taking the sound energy from here energy from large area is focused on small area so this is amplified how many times 17 times plus there is a liver action and this liver action is 1.3 unit i mean if you are doing the energy of 1 unit hit on the auricular chain it will produce the force of 1.3 unit here so these are two mechanism which amplify the force of sound energy i'm saying not the vibrations i'm saying not the frequency no frequency of vibration here and here is the same but intensity of vibration changes the force of it changes right so how many how many times it changes from here up to there 17 times because surface area is 1 by 17 here and 1.3 due to the liver action so if you multiply it's about 20 to 22 times so the real function of middle ear is that it is picking the sound energy from the external ear from the tympanic membrane and through the auricular chain it faithfully transfer the sound energy to the oval window opening in the inner ear during this process the intensity or force of the sound energy right that has been multiplied more than 20 times but frequency or you can you understand frequency of the vibration remain the same pitch remains the same don't talk about pitch it reminds me my wife very high pitch okay do you want me to disturb in my lecture okay so we are talking about that frequency actually uh, why i stop you pitch is slightly different it depends on the frequency and some other factors also so i don't want to go into detail at this very moment so i just wanted to put in your mind that real function of actually if you remove the auricular chain still you can hear but you will uh, there will be only bone conduction not through air conduction and amplified through the system so you will hear poorly that's right. right so due to this amplification process the middle ear is acting as an amplifier of the sound so not only sony has made the amplifiers sony company i mean not a name of a girl and uh, even nature has made amplifiers already in your ear that's so middle ear act as an amplifier right. is that right Yeah. Sympathetic augmentation of sound. You are getting too emotional. I am talking about ear, not any sexy thing. Okay. So this was the basic about basics about the ear. Now little bit di dimensions of the middle ear. If you talk. yeah if you go into detail of this process this is called impedance matching that i will teach you in physiology of middle ear not into anatomy okay
right so now we go into little bit about the dimensions of the middle ear as i already told now little bit more detail about the middle ear right now this is the medial wall of the this is the yes medial. medial wall now you can see that medial wall here from here up to here it is made of tympanic membrane, membrane. but medial wall extend upward beyond the upper end of the tympanic membrane is that right so it, this middle ear cavity we can say internally middle ear cavity lies part of a middle ear cavity lies opposite to the tympanic membrane this is tympanic membrane right and part of the middle ear cavity is above the tympanic membrane superior to tympanic membrane this part of middle ear cavity this part of middle ear cavity this is called not epitympanic you are trying to confuse me yeah but we are talking about lower first because if you first you talk about lower if you talk about upper it will fall down so first talk about lower yes this is called tympanic cavity proper simple name tympanic cavity proper right this is tympanic cavity proper right middle ear cavity the lower part of the middle ear cavity which is just medial medial to what tympanic membrane this is called tympanic cavity proper and part of the middle ear cavity which is extending upward right this is called epitympanic recess epi tympanic recess epitympanic recess is it clear later on we will talk about that head of the malleus lies into epitympanic recess this is a long arm of the malleus this was a here was a lateral process head of the malleus lies into which area epitympanic recess even most of the body of what is this incus this also lies into epitympanic recess is that right so epitympanic recess has head of the malleus and most of the body of the incus right any question up to this uh, its height is did i tell you what was the total height of this from here to here 15 mm right vertical height of the middle ear cavity is 15 mm and anteroposterior anteroposterior mean if uh, we move backward this is middle ear cavity and if you look at the backward from front wall to the back this is also 15 mm so 15 mm high 15 mm anteroposteriorly 6 mm wide here 2 mm wide here and 4 mm wide here is it clear any question up to this now one by one now we'll discuss about each wall middle ear we'll talk in detail about the lateral wall then we'll talk about medial wall posterior wall anterior wall roof and the floor so one by one we discuss now the different walls of the middle ear and their important features there let's start with the lateral wall let's start with the lateral wall now if i'm standing like this if i'm standing like this and you enter into my external auditory meatus right you are moving in so if you look if you are a torch you throw light in the front you will find which part tympanic membrane so i'm going to draw the tympanic membrane here right so let me draw the tympanic membrane here okay now the structures will go into yes now this is middle ear cavity here is the roof what is this roof what is this anterior wall and this is lateral wall posterior must be 
here and this is the floor now I'm going to discuss about this wall now I'm going to talk about this wall this is the lateral wall now it right now we are going to focus on that that if there, there is external artery meatus from here you are going to see my lateral wall what are the structures here is that right and how it looks as I told you part of the lateral wall in the lower part of the lateral wall there is a membrane what is it there is a membrane and this membrane is called tympanic, tympanic membrane and if you go medially the middle ear cavity goes above the tympanic membrane and that is called epitympanic recess right now so mid, we can say medial wall has two part medial wall has two part membranous part and upper is bony wall what is this if we talk about this sorry lateral wall if we talk about the lateral wall this part of the lateral wall is made of membranous above is made of bony now this membrane I will bring it here out and we'll discuss into detail because it has a lot of important clinical implications so let's talk about tympanic membrane right which is okay so I will make it like this now if you look at the tympanic membrane and you throw light on that through the otoscope right what structures you features you can visualize here right but before really we go for that we talk about the dimensions it's about semi oval about one centimeter right diameter is about nine to ten millimeter right tympanic membrane number one thing number two thing before I go into its uh, structural uh, features then it has a very special angle it is not a straight membrane like this it is not like this number one it has a depression right it is depressed or concave a little bit depressed towards the middle ear is that right so it's not a straight membrane it's a like a conical little bit right number two it is not vertically straight it is like this it means it is tilted it is tilted it is very important here is your middle ear cavity this membrane is not like this okay I will make it like this it is not like this it is like this it is like that now the, what is the importance of this angulation it is at about 55 degree with the external meatus floor now why this angulation is there why not it is 90 degree it is 55 degree the clinical importance of this is that roof of externally caustic meatus is small and floor is long and usually foreign bodies lodge here foreign bodies lodge into this pocket right or wax lodge into this pocket and when you are doing syringing right when you are doing syringing uh, you throw the fluid to clean the air the fluid should move like this like this so that you throw the fluid along the roof you throw the fluid along the roof so that it moves medially then it goes downward and build a pressure on the foreign body and push it outward is that right so this is important to know that this is tilted right and another thing if this is tympanic membrane again right this is externally caustic meatus this is externally caustic meatus it is not straight it is not straight it is tilted even it is not tilted like this it has tilt another like that so it is facing it is facing not purely laterally no it is facing laterally downward and forward is that right it is facing how laterally if it was pure laterally it will be like this but actually it's angulated like that so it is facing laterally and it is facing outward yes forward and downward right this is the exact orientation of this membrane location right here
Now this is the skin. Now we can say this is the membrane, right? And this is the middle layer. This is middle layer. This is sternal caustic meatus. And here is the what is this? Tympanic membrane. Now tympanic membrane on the outer part, this is called cuticular part. Cuticular mean from cutex, not from the nails cutex. This is actually skin, but thank God hairless skin, right? This is a delicate skin here. And inside, what is this? This is mucosa of the, this is the mucosa of the middle ear. So out, outward there is skin, inside it is, medially it is bounded by the mucosa. And in between these two, in between these two, there is fibrous layer. So basically this is a tri-layer membrane. Its membrane is made of skin outside, made of mucosa inside and both of them are applied on the fibrous framework. Am I clear? But I want to correct this diagram. Right? I made it purposely like this. So when I correct you remember. Actually, there was a bone here. You remember that? What was this bone? Malleus. And here it's lateral part. And what is this? Handle of malleus. Handle of malleus is firmly attached with the membrane. It's so firmly attached that actually mucosa lies over it. Even mucosa is not between this and the fibrous layer. So handle of the malleus is firmly attached with the tympanic membrane. Is that right? But still I will say it's trilayer. It's very interesting to know that this outer layer is skin which is derived embryologically from ectoderm. This inner layer is mucosa which is derived embryologically from endoderm. And this is connective tissue which is derived from mesoderm. mesoderm. So this is one part of the body, a little membrane, but it has all the three embryonic layers. Components derived from three embryonic layer. Ectoderm contributes by making skin. Endoderm contributes by making mucosa, mucosal inner lining. And what was that? Fibrous part. Fibrous part, which is making what? Mesoderm. Derived from the mesoderm, right? So this is exactly how it is. Now, let's come here. When you will throw light on this, right, what you will find? This is the anterior side, this is the posterior side. Right, through light, first of all, this is a semi-transparent membrane. If it is semi, semi-transparent membrane, if you throw strong light, uh, you can, uh, the structures which are more medially to this membrane, the, they can be seen. I think you can understand if I say this is a see-through membrane. Now you are happy, right? So it's a see-through membrane. So what you will see through it? Handle of milius, not very happy. Now, what you will see through it? Handle of malleus. Now, handle of malleus, this structure, when you are throwing light from here, very strong light, and here you are visualizing, right? So, what you will see, this structure will be seen through the membrane. So, when feature, important feature is that you find this handle of malleus, which can be seen through the membrane, and this is directed, handle of the malleus, or also called manubrium of the malleus, it is directed downward and backward. Is that right? With that, another important thing. Actually, up to this lateral process, this connective tissue is very thick. This connective tissue is very thick. thick. But above this, it becomes very, very loose. So it means lower part of the membrane is stiff and upper part of the membrane is loose. Is that right? Especially this handle of the malleus pulls the membrane medially. It pulls the membrane, it pulls the membrane like this. When it is pulling the membrane like this, this part becomes very tense. This part becomes very tense. So this is called pars tensa. An upper part is loose. So we call it pars flaccida. Again it is important to know because it's easy to perforate from here. Is that right? It's only loose areolar tissue here and here is a stiff connective tissue membrane. Where there are radial fibers, 
Radial fiber means that if I make it like this, this is the handle of malleus. Oh my God, it should be like this. Handle of malleus. Radial fibers are like that. These are the collagen fibers, collagen bundles. They are radial and there are also, these are outer. And inside it, connective tissue, there are circular fibers. So basically, when I talk about these connective tissue substance, which is made of collagen fibers, they are radial fibers which are radiating from the, what is this? Handle of malleus, right outward, and they are circular fibers also. Radial are superficial, circular are <coughs> deeper. And circular fibers become thickened on the periphery. Anyway, that is not so important. What really important is when you throw light, you see the handle of the malleus, which is directed downward and backward. And with that, now it is very important, this membrane is slotted into a bony, what? Bony sulcus. This is called tympanic sulcus. This membrane is fixed into a bony sulcus. It is slotted in. It is lodged in. Right? It's fixed in. Bony sulcus. Right? But this bony sulcus superiorly is deficient. It is deficient. It is not so tightly connected. So there are two reasons why upper part of the membrane becomes loose or flaccid. There are three reasons. One reason connective tissue here is very loose. Here connective tissue is very uh, thick. Secondly, handle of malleus pull it inward. So it f produces further tension. Thirdly, this part of the membrane is properly planted in a sulcus. Upper part is relatively loose. Now, here is what? Yes, what is this? Lateral process. Lateral process is somewhere here. Right? Under the membrane. From here, from the lateral process, above it is loose area. So you find there is a fold of fold in the membrane going forward and also going backward. This fold is called anterior malleolar fold and this fold is called posterior malleolar fold, right? And above it there is pars, what is this? Pars flaccida and under it what is this? Pars tensa, right? So how many features we know already about the tympanic membrane from lateral view that you find the handle of the malleus? we find anterior malleolar fold which extend from the lateral process forward, posterior malleolar fold which extend from the lateral process of malleus backward and upward. And above the malleolar fold part of the membrane is loose called pars flaccida and lower part of the membrane is tight and this is called pars tensa, right? And another thing, as you know this membrane is not like that you are throwing the light like this because membrane is angulated like this. So when you throw the light, light is reflected downward and forward. Light is reflected <coughs> downward when you throw strong light, reflected downward and forward. So because light is reflected like that, so from here we see a cone of light which is directed downward and forward. These angles are very important. important. The handle of the manubrium is directed downward and backward, then cone of light. Cone of light is not an anatomical structure. It is just a reflection of light when you throw light. So this is what? Downward and forward. Why it is important? Because if membrane bulge out or bulge in, these angu angulations are altered. Is that right? Any question up to this? So this is about the tympanic membrane. And now, what is the nerve supply of the tympanic membrane? That is very, very important. Nerve supply. But before I go to the nerve supply of the tympanic membrane, this point, the most central depressed point of tympanic membrane, where I can, this point is called umbo. What is umbo? Umbo is the part of the tympanic membrane where tip of the handle of the malleus ends. And it is the most depressed part or concave part. Is that right? This most concave part is called umbo. So this point can be called umbo. Umbo. Right? So from umbo, handle of malleus is going upward and forward and cone of light is going downward and forward. These are very important landmarks here. Now, nerve supply to the tympanic membrane. It is very important, right? The nerve supply which comes to the tympanic membrane, number one is auriculotemporal nerve. Auriculotemporal nerve is a branch of, yes, don't tell me it's a branch of some nerve. Yes. Auriculotemporal nerve is a branch of? 
trigeminal which division of trigeminal mandibular division out of mandibular division very good so you know trigeminal ganglion and here it is ophthalmic division and there is maxillary division this try what is this mandibular division which goes through from an oval from here a nerve comes which is called auriculo temporal it goes towards the ear backward right this is the now this is auriculo temporal nerve auriculo temporal nerve number one auriculo temporal nerve supplies what is it this is which nerve auriculo temporal nerve is a branch of mandibular division of trigeminal which is fifth cranial nerve so this auriculo temporal nerve supplies what is this tympanic membrane from outside and from outside also there is auricular branch of vagus nerve right auricular branch of vagus nerve that's also supplies but auricular branch of vagus nerve get gets a few fibers from the facial nerve right so it means there is a contribution of seventh nerve also so outer part of the membrane is supplied with auricular temporal nerve also supplied by the vagus nerve and vagus nerve brings some fibers through a communication from the facial, facial nerve and inside it is supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve right i will tell you later on in the next part of the lecture the glossopharyngeal nerve provide a tympanic branch to the tympanic plexus and tympanic plexus provides the inner side of the connections inner side of the tympanic membrane so these are the nerves the question is that why to know this there are reasons for that very important reason for example auricular temporal nerve is coming from mandibular mandibular nerve also supply to the teeth sometimes if there severe pain in the teeth there may be referred pain in the ear, ear. right if there severe pain in the teeth because the nerve is supplying the teeth is also supplying the lower teeth is also supplying the ear, ear. so there can be referred pain otalgia referred otalgia pain in the ear then we talk about seventh uh, importance of tenth nerve here you know what is the importance of tenth nerve this is vagus nerve vagus nerve give a small auricular branch to the ear but vagus nerve also supplies the heart vagus nerve also supplies the heart and many other visceral structures sometimes it happen that if vagus nerve is irritated here it may produce some autonomic reflexes for the viscera right for example when you are sometimes when you are trying to what you are doing you are putting something in your ear even though one one of my friend who is ENT specialist he say never put in the ear anything smaller than your elbow I don't know what he meant by this but he said then your ear will remain infection free anyway I will not go into detail but if you are trying to put small things into your ear if you irritate this vagal fiber you may have cough you understanding you may have cough respiratory or sometimes you irritate this fibers it may produce reflex bradycardia heart rate become slow. slow and even cardiac arrest extremely rarely can happen don't take ears lightly especially inside of the ear outside you can do decorations and other things right but inside be careful so tenth nerve is here and if you bother this nerve it can produce some weird reflex activities because it supplies the heart supplies the lungs so if it can precipitate cough it can uh, precipitate uh, bradycardia that is why sometimes if there is thickened wax here and thick wax is irritating this the person will have cough and this kind of kind of ear cough can be uh, cured by removing the wax right but it doesn't mean that uh, everyone coming with the cough you look in the ear better to look in the throat you may find something there right now seventh nerve okay another importance sometimes in syringing syringing if you are throwing water in a very aggressive way and unfortunately you stimulate the vagus nerve through this branch it may produce bradycardia and cardiac arrest is that right so anyway this was the importance of this nerve what is the importance of that there are few fiber from the seventh nerve communicating to the tenth nerve and eventually reaching here few fiber every few fiber of nerve in the body are not so important but these few fiber are important why they are important because later on we will learn that facial nerve on this side has a geniculate ganglion facial nerve geniculate 
later on i will go into detail geniculate ganglion in the geniculate ganglion varicella zoster virus may be latent varicella varicella zoster herpes right virus may be latent sometimes this virus is activated and it goes retrograde and it come to this seventh fiber right this virus travels all the way up to this cutaneous fiber supplying the skin of the tympanic membrane in this case patient will develop severe what is this pain in the ear and if you look in the ear there will be hemorrhagic blisters in the ear is that right we call it ramsey hunt syndrome what do you call it ramsey hunt syndrome so this is the importance of seventh nerve that there is a clinical situation ramsey hunt syndrome in which there is very painful hemorrhagic blisters develop on the ex external aspect of tympanic membrane. membrane and even there may be hemorrhagic fluid within the middle ear right and this may pro be produced because in the geniculate ganglia varicella zoster virus is residing latent and it has reactivated and uh, produced pathology over here right then inside what is it ninth cranial nerve ninth cranial nerve is 